the great story of our lives is just beginning. The fight against climate change is going to accelerate more in the next four years than it has done in the last 40. Now, steel and cement, my industries, along with so many other heavy industries, have a lot to answer for. But unlike cement, that can do very little to reduce the escape of trapped CO2 released during production, steel already has many of those answers. Answers that lie right here beneath our feet and in the skies above our heads here in Australia. I'd like to mention just a couple. First, every two minutes, the energy reaching Earth from the sun is, is equivalent to all the power that we need in a whole year. Second, with over 50 million tons of reserves, Australia ranks first amongst the world's largest exporters of iron ore, and second for coal and LNG. Put these two points together, and Australia could well be a major industrial powerhouse, not simply a resource supplier. Now granted, with the world's appetite for iron, coal and gas growing year on year, it doesn't take too much effort to dig it up, pour it into ships and send it across the world. Especially with coal power stations and steel blast furnaces still growing. Over 200 plants were still built last year. But consider that instead of exporting these vast quantities of low-value material, if Australia could turn its homegrown talents to adding value to these commodities, exporting instead highly prized, semi-finished, and fully finished products, and if this was done with one eye on the environment, the results would be astounding. That's why we are investing billions in practicing what I'm preaching here. And we're doing this in partnership with the government of South Australia, a progressive government determined to capture the one catalyst that unlocks all other natural resources this country possesses in such abundance, renewable energy. And capture it just when energy prices are rising and demand is rising exponentially. So although we clearly need more energy, it now has to be the right kind of energy, used in conjunction with the right kind of minerals. This is the key to unlocking everything else. Perhaps even resolving the trilemma that exists between steel being the most polluting industry, accounting for more than 9% of global, global CO2 emissions, rising populations demanding even more steel, and governments now clamping down on the polluting plants which feed that need. Clearly, the industry will have to change this way, produce iron and steel so needed, but without the pollution. And that's what my business is doing here, in a town that really has it all. Welcome to Wyala, the hidden treasure of Australia. It all starts with magnetite ore, from a colossal former hematite mine that's more than a century old and only 50 kilometers from our own deep seaport. A hematite mine that is now transitioning to high-grade magnetite, with more than 4 billion tons of reserves already identified, reserves we intend to extract over the decades to come. Today, we are producing only about 2.5 million tons of magnetite, but we will increase this to 15 million tons by 2026, and then to 30 million tons by 2030. This magnetite really is the best of the best raw materials for making green steel from green energy, as our recent sample, of bat sample batch of DRI has already proven. These pellets are the mineral equivalent of a 99 vintage Penfolds Grange. We, of course, could just export them, and no doubt we will be doing some of that. But in line with our philosophy of climbing the value chain, we will also be making and selling the wine, not just exporting the grapes utilizing hydrogen. Made in South Australian government's electrolyzers, we'll be producing high-grade iron using pure green hydrogen, transforming near-limitless magnetite reserves in special furnaces powered by our own wind and solar farms, itself a product of a rather large nuclear reactor, the sun. And amongst all that good news is really good news. Month by month, is getting cheaper and easier to capture all that solar and wind energy and turn it into electricity, leaving more of the pollutants in the ground, utilizing instead 
the most plentiful as well as the lightest element in the galaxy, hydrogen. And not just gray or blue hydrogen, itself sources of global warming, but green hydrogen. But sadly, hydrogen is expensive to store and costly and complex to transport. But luckily for us and for Australia, there is one genuinely brilliant use, which means we don't have to store or transport it. We can use it daily as it's produced to make green iron and green steel. At Wyala, with its magnetite reserves, its fantastic solar and wind resources, its deep sea water port, its well-connected well network, and its superb skilled workforce, we will, be the, we will be changing the nature of everything we do. We'll be replacing our blast furnaces with electric arc furnaces, fed by local scrap, plus direct reduced iron, DRI, produced in hydrogen fuel plants using our vast supplies of magnetite, all powered by a raft of renewable energy technologies. We call this plan CN30, carbon neutrality across the business by 2030. That's a full decade, but in most cases, two decades ahead of the rest of the steel industry. And what we're doing in Australia, we're also doing elsewhere, phasing out all our blast furnaces, replacing them with electric arc furnaces. First, reducing our carbon footprint, then eliminating it entirely. So the trick is to pick the right spot. And Wyala is just right. Quite simply, we don't, the ship, we don't ship the mountain to us. We go to the magnetite mountain, harness the sun and the wind, expand the workforce and the population of the town, possibly fourfold, and boost our magnetite production from two and a half million tons to 15 in the first few years, and then 30 by the end of the decade while always aiming to convert as much of it as possible into green iron to feed, to feed our steel plants in Australia, across the world, and those of our partners. Now, if that sounds like a lot to do, it is. But all this would still only amount for a very small percentage of the world actually requires. <coughs> but sadly, not everywhere is blessed like Viola. So our plan is we will make it here in Australia and sell it or use it where it can't be made. The opportunity for us is too good to miss. The opportunity for Australia should also be seen as too good to miss. This country's wonderful combination of billions of tons of high-grade iron ore and almost infinite power from the sun could be at the heart of a new, clean, and sustainable industrial revolution. An unmissable chance to turn limitless sunshine and wind into endless prosperity for Australia. So I would like to end with a final thought. At the turn of the 19th century, the United States of America had an endless supply of natural resources, energy, and eternal vistas of land. They had a workforce willing to utilize those resources, and government keen to encourage industrialists and financiers. Now, you know the rest. America capitalized on these trends to become the world's leading economy. Australia today also floats on a sea of natural resources spread across a land of boundless proportions, benefiting from a skilled and willing workforce, and possesses governments that support sustainable energy production and help industrial development. The similarities are as striking as they are overwhelming. The message is as clear as they are obvious. Sooner or later, demand for high carbon manufacturing is bound to dry up. But the demand for steel will only ever increase. So the question is staring us all in the face. Why? Why export millions of tons of low-value raw materials when you have all the ingredients to generate tens of billions in high-value super green iron and green steel? That is the opportunity. And the partnership we have put together in Wyala is a model that can be replicated time and time again across the nation. It really is an invitation to work together in lockstep, certainly here in WA, but also in so many other parts of this big, big country. So I'd like to invite you all to start those partnerships today, and I would like to thank you for your time. Thank you.